Korea, with the British Commonwealth Division, United Nations Forces, New Zealand volunteers of the 16th Field Regiment pick up their Christmas rations from the divisional supply point. Some of the more choice items are followed by sides of Australian pork and 20-pound turkeys, one for every 20 men. Up to the forward area goes the lovely grub, to be handed over, for better or worse, to the army cooks. About 15% of the New Zealand forces in Korea are Maoris, and up at 161 Battery, a team of them decides to give the cooks a rest and turn out the Christmas dinner in a traditional Maori hangi or oven. A small pit has been dug and filled with large stones. A fire built on top heats them up, the embers are raked off, the ashes washed away, and on go lots of big fat turkeys. Finally, more water is thrown on, and as the resulting steam cloud hits the cold winter air, the turkeys are covered and the whole thing buried in earth. Over at the cookhouse, the army pattern field ovens are still working, but only on light duties. After the prescribed cooking time, the earth is shifted and reveals a sight to please even Mrs. Beaton. There's no shortage of volunteers when it comes to unloading the oven. Everything is done to a turn, and with a free issue of a couple of bottles of beer per man, the old place seems a bit more like home. In keeping with army tradition, Christmas dinner is served by the officers. The CO, Colonel Patterson, and 161 Battery Commander, Major Manders, dish out the turkey and cranberry sauce to be followed by fruit salad and cream. The long Cold War goes on. In the OPIP, the forward observation officer watches his battery gunfire pinpoint the enemy positions in the bleak Korean hills. Near Palmerston in the North Island, Godfrey Bowen, sawmill manager and accountant, is attacking the world shearing record. Like all other New Zealand shearers, he has to catch his own sheep. Conditions for the record are the same as for regular work. The Cheviot Romney crosses on this farm carry up to 10 pounds of wool per fleece. In his first hour, the 32-year-old aspirant put through 51 sheep, an average of one caught and shorn every 70 and 3 fifth seconds. The standing record, 409 sheep in a day of nine working hours, is already held by New Zealand. This is a strenuous sport, but a profitable one. One more towards the record. And if this part-time sharer gets it, professionals should be put on their metal. Bowen is not only a fast shearer, he's a high-grade shearer, and the sheep are beautifully clean. Towards the end of the day, the strain begins to tell. It's not only the work that's tiring, but the fact of working amidst a tight press of spectators. Nearly 5.30 now, and Godfrey's hobby of shearing sheep is almost over for the day. This is the last one, number 456. Bowen has beaten the record by 47 sheep, and during the day dropped about two tons of wool on the floor for his cobber to pick up, over a thousand pounds worth. 447, 450, 453, 456. But there'll be no need for the new champion to count sheep to get some sleep tonight. One more job first, though, with the official witnesses, timekeepers, past champions, friends and neighbours. Congratulations, Godfrey! At many points through the 150 miles of country between Mount Ruapehu and White Island, hot water and steam rise naturally out of the ground, sometimes under great pressure. Well known to tourists is the Karapiti blowhole at Wairaki, one of the loudest natural noises in the land. Even where no thermal activity is evident, there may be high pressure steam below ground, a thing only drilling can prove. 
In the search for power, many experimental bores have been put down. This one is through the hard rock to steam, but a deep column of cold water is holding the steam down. A compressed air lead is fed into the bore to blow the water clear. Here it comes, water, steam, compressed air lead and all. That looks like something that could drive machinery. Most of the successful bores are topped by measuring equipment to test the power and constancy of the supply. Experimental drilling has caused changes at Wairaki. The main road to Rotorua has been diverted and behind a barrier an 8-inch bore discharges a scalding blast across the former highway. With greater energy than the Karapiti blowhole, this is about the loudest noise in the country. Within 50 feet of the vent, a man can only make himself heard by shouting in a rather high-pitched voice. To the inquiring stick, the jet of steam feels quite solid. There is power enough here to heat and light a fair-sized township, if only it can be harnessed. Hey, you can't harness it that way. What did I tell you? As the discharge points are at a good distance from the bores, the oppressive noise is away from the men at the controls. This 8-inch bore goes down to a depth of well over a thousand feet. The jet we've been watching is being turned off, and the wet steam released instead into a separator plant, where its useful energy can be measured. While the valve of the separator circuit is being opened by one man, the discharge valve is being closed by another. Switching this amount of energy has to be done smoothly. More and more of the steam from the 8-inch bore is released into the separator circuit. And finally, the open discharge pipe is closed off completely. Now the separator is turned on. Steam is the cream in this separator, and hot water the skim that is thrown away. At the risk of being called a geothermal bore myself, I have to explain that water mixed with the steam is the main problem at Wairaki since engineers who design steam turbines like their steam pure and dry. The amount of boiling hot water thrown out from the 8-inch bore is quite considerable. After passing through this separator gear, the steam is dry, and so suitable for driving the turbines of a generating station. The dryness is shown by the transparent cone at the mouth of the outlet pipe. At Wairaki, the separator seems to be the key to the use of geothermal power. Interest in this equipment was shown by Sir John Cockrum, chief of Britain's atomic research station at Harwell, during a recent visit. Sir John Cockrum came to deliver the Rutherford Memorial Lecture in New Zealand. To research department and works ministry officers at Wairaki, he stressed that atomic power, when it comes, will be expensive. Their researches into fresh sources of natural power will always be important. What quantity of steam is available for power generation in the North Island, only further drilling can prove.